That's only 200 yards. Nice shoulder shot would do him. Whew. What do you think, Lyndon? Uh, that's, a, that's a great deer. I've got a perfect rest on his bale. The first buck we came across was uh, a really nice 4x4, four four, uh, long tine, uh, white tail, uh, right with a doe. I mean, uh, Ron hit here with, with the peak of the rut was on. Gonna go to the top here pretty soon. Okay, the doe's, here he goes, following the doe up. Gonna get skyline in, you're gonna really appreciate that rack. Look at that height on those tines. Well, if he finishes going that out next year, he's gonna be a right pushing on Boone and Crockett. I wanted to shoot that buck. Lyndon talked me out of it. He's been mentioning some bigger 5x5s he sees. First day in the morning, I don't think we want to shoot this buck yet. Can't believe it. I know, first morning, that's a great deer, but an eight point, let's try for something better. I know, I hear you. I mean, a, a great eight is always fun, but if you've got better on the first morning, what we do? Day? And the weather's supposed to clear up, so we should do better. <sighs> this is one of those I'm gonna kick myself later deals. I'm starting to think Nebraska is my favorite new whitetail hunting state. I've hunted up around Valentine, and last year I took a beautiful 142 4 x 4 buck. Reminded me a lot of that one I passed up here. I gotta clear some grass here, and now that doe's in the way. Now I gotta get him turned broadside. Okay. You ready? Pull my shot here. That's a hit, isn't it? Yeah, you got him. He doesn't want to lose that doe. Did he hit? What's he doing? Didn't he mess? He's, he's hit. hit. I got him. He's hit. He's, he don't want to leave that doe. Good grief, he's like... Go ahead and hit him again, Ron. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. That doe. Okay, here he goes, here he goes. Turns there. Okay, you ready? Go ahead. You got him. Down. He's oh, down. He's down. <laughs> Ooh, he looked like Good a big shot. One. Oh, wow, is he worth waiting for? Yep. Look at the length on this one. And I thought, this is really spectacular whitetail hunting for Nebraska, which I have really never thought of as a great whitetail state. Natural mule deer habitat, this part of Nebraska's seen a real growth in whitetail. Here in the sand hills, uh, where I do my guiding and hunting around, we have it, it's maybe a 50-50 mix, whitetail or mule deer. And if you're on a whitetail hunt, you, you best know the difference. You'll see at the end of that little rope tail, they got a black tip. And that's why some folks in the old days especially used to call them black tails. But uh, the actual black tail is out in the Pacific Northwest. The grass in the way right there. What a wonderful season, the rut. Carefree, nothing to do but chase girls. Like an eight point white tail working his way up from that meadow. See him over there headed up that, that little mowed road. Oh, I think I see him. Yep, just came out of that brush pocket. Gone. Yeah, out of that horseweed. Uh, and then he's got like a road going up there. Mm hmm. Mowed. Mm hmm. Uh, I got him. Just one. That's all I see. That's all I see. Doesn't look real wide or particularly high to me. No, it's just a, maybe to his ears, a, a 120 class deer is all that is. Oh yeah, I see he's turned his head now. No, yeah. I mean, that's a nice deer, but for out here, yeah. first day, uh-uh. You got better stuff than that. I think we'll you? go see what else we can find, okay? All right, uh, let's make it a, like a 190 buck. Let's do that. <laughs> it's been a real eye-opener for host Rom Spomer to find so many good whitetail in western Nebraska with outfitter Lyndon Branson. The numbers have even made him confident about passing up deer. Yeah, we had some really nice encounters with uh, any number of bucks. You expect to see a lot of those 130 to 140 class, but sometimes you get a really, really big one. You see him? He's just over the top of the hay bales heading for that windmill. Oh, I see you back now. Yeah, I, I saw antlers early. There, there, see that? Yep, straight up. He's not too bad. He's not bad. Big eight point, but that's... There's some, more, there's some more ears sticking up on the other side. Some does or something in there. See them? Just don't the see them. I see them half their head. Yeah. There's a bunch of deer over there. If we can get dropped down, wind's just right. Wind's perfect. We can go right up those hay bales and pop over on them. I'll get my rifle. Anytime I see a 4x4 four four that's got potential, I want to get a better look at him. And we had these hay bales for cover. That is always a great way to stalk in open country like this. Get behind them and you can oftentimes cover several hundred yards uh, out of sight. I mean, you can stand up and walk upright. I think that doe's got us pinned. Maybe he'll come up too. I can see her ears yet. He's going to the left. 
bring your boyfriend over. What do you think, Lyndon? If we move, is she gonna blow now? She'll, yeah, she'll, she'll take the rest, rest of them with her. Or credit. All right. Almost rush the situation as you can think yeah. about. That's what I was wondering about, just rushing. But as long as she's watching, there's no rushing going on. How are they gonna go up the valley or up the hills? They're gonna go up the hill, because that's where they always go for cover on. We got live and open shot at least, if they go that way. She's still got us. Yeah, she's gonna spare us down for 10, 15 minutes. It's getting late in the day here. We're gonna need to make a move on something, huh? Let's just go straight at her and see what happens. Okay. We were running out of time, the day was getting short, and we were needing to see if that animal was a trophy. So we decided to just basically rush the situation, push it. Go that way. See all the does. No buck, Ron. Buck's not there. See that? You gotta follow him. Okay, come on. If that buck just shows up in that same place. Ron, the buck's up here, Ron. Oh, he's way out there. Let's go over here and get right behind his windmill and walk up behind that windmill. Get the range on him. 350. I can hit him if I need to. If open country uh, shots could be 75 yards to whatever your abilities really are, and including what the gun's capabilities are. With practice, and if you know what your gun is doing, you can pull those shots off. Okay, what do you think of him? Ron, he's just an eight point. I don't think he's good enough. No, not for first day, Ron. I thought so, but. He's a solid 125, but he's just an eight point. Yeah, this, uh, you got way better gear than that, don't you? We do, we do. That was a fun stock anyway. Man, it's amazing what you can do out in this open country. They're working away from you and that wind blowing you, they don't know anything. They don't. Great, I love it. I mean, that was the right move to push those does, because he's either gonna follow those does up the hill, or they're gonna run off like they did, and we're gonna say, oh, shoot, here he is working his way exactly. up the valley. We, we didn't know it, but he'd walked right by them, yeah. paid them no attention, went on. And this way, we all went, so I'm going up the valley. Let's go find a bigger one. All right, do it. And since the, the, the day was even getting shorter and shorter, we just ran back to the truck and uh, took off looking for uh, our last, uh, the last push to try to find something for the evening. Before the day is done, we've got to find them. We will. Well, they are big bodied animals, though they really fool you when they first jump up. They just hide in all those little holes and swales up there. That's really an interesting behavior. Just, just goes to show you how adaptable whitetails are. They'll just figure a way to make it work. Look at that guy. And he's in within rifle range. There he cuts across again. Look at that. That is cool. That is really something. As we were finishing up the, the last evening run in the truck, I, I, was, I knew I was going to wind up where I wanted to be, where another really hot core area for, for the whitetails. Hey, Ron, we're pulling into this, this really swampy area where we see, uh, see whitetails often. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to leave the truck back here so we don't bump anything. Okay. You kind of take that little ridge over there. I'm going to go up over the top here. I'm, I'm going to look at this ridge over here, OK? okay. Uh, if you, you well, yeah, and now I'll, I'll hurt you if, you, if I see something. Right? I, I got to get some of my gear organized here, so go ahead. So I, we, we, got, we got out of the truck, and uh, Ron was back at the truck, still getting stuff ready. So I walked to the to the ridge just to the left, and uh, I didn't hardly go anywhere. And I was spotting white tails. There's some does. There's a big buck. Buck. Ron, get your stuff on. There's a buck over the hill here. What did you see? Let's go, Ron. A big ten point. Up this big like long times like that. Let's go. Lyndon was all excited and after we passed up some nice four points on that one particularly high haul long time four by four early in the morning. Now I'm thinking this has got to be a big buck if Lyndon is excited. I thought looking at that hill right there. He was in these trees right here. He was pushing the door around. There goes the door. There she goes. There she goes. He's right with her. Okay. Got trees in the way, man. Okay. Wrong. We gotta go. Let's go. All right. Right here. There's your shot. What's the range? 374 on. Dead on 374 to that buck. Right? He's the one standing the second one up on the hillside. Yep, the one facing left. There he is, right there. Here goes. 
giant down. Oh yeah, right down. Yeah. He went right down, didn't he? He's just lying there. I think he's done for. I think so. I think he's all yours. He's not moving. I mean, we could tell that it was uh, a tremendous buck. Uh, upper end for this area, that is for sure. There's your shot. What's the range? 374, Th Ron. By golly, I know the trajectory of that 243 pretty well, and 374 is definitely doable. Get a little daylight over his back, and you've got a good 16 inches of vital zone to drop the bullet into. One shot, 95 grain ballistic silver tip from that Winchester bullet. Pow! Did the job. Giant down. Oh, yeah. Look, Look at this at thing, that. Ron. Whoa. Oh. I couldn't believe how wide he was when he ran away. Oh, beautiful tine length. Look at this. That's a that's almost a 12-inch tine right there. Lyndon, you've been holding out on me. I was saving no, I was holding out for you. <laughs> Just for you, man. Oh man. First day. Woo! Holy macaronis. The experience hunting with Ron has been a, a, a real treat. Uh, the, uh, the amount of knowledge that he has about whitetails of of all the many places he hunts, uh, and Ron brought a lot of that uh, to the table and was able to enlighten me on a lot of stuff. It's, it's been it's been a great experience. Antler sticking out everywhere it was like no question. I didn't even count the tines. I just knew with a with a main beam like that and that kind of spread, okay. that is a trophy deer. Yeah. Woo! These grasslands are amazing. How many of us in America this 21st century? can walk those kinds of distances, go for miles and miles and never hit a road or a power line, never hear truck traffic. This sand hill hunt with Lyndon Branson was spectacular. Man, that is a special deer.